What's going on, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Whatnots Review Show, episode 34, where each week we have a different story to talk about. Could be a comic, could be a movie, an anime, a manga, or something else. We read it, we watch it, we do what we have to do. Come back here and talk about it. My name is Kyle Springer, and I am joined, as ever, by Melissa Wilkinson. How are you? I'm good, Kyle. How are you today? Good. We were j- just talking about how it's Mickey's 90th birthday yes. uh, on the day we are recording this, uh, which is pretty ex- exciting. I've already reblogged a picture of him from Kingdom Hearts, um, oh. and it's fantastic. And I've started playing <laughs> k- more k- k- Kingdom Hearts games. I've been slowly going through all of them because I'm super excited for Kingdom Hearts 3. Yes. And uh, I started Birth by Sleep last night um which is i think one of the only ones i have left to play so there you go cool yeah yeah, Yeah, i'm a big disney nerd and a big disney parks nerd like that's most of what my youtube feed is okay so i'm gonna have to see if anybody out there is doing anything special today to celebrate you know mr mouse's 90th birthday i'm sure they are (laughs) i'm sure they are uh, this week, though, we are not talking about something <laughs> Disney. Uh, no, we're pr- talking about the opposite of that. Probably the opposite of that, yeah. <laughs> oh. um, this week we are talking about a Netflix original show, a French Netflix or- yes. original show called The Forest. Or La um, Florette. La Florette, yes. Something like that. I don't speak a lick of French. I uh, speak some of it that i remember from high school there you go i can say we 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 bonjour <laughs> yeah bonjour um oh let do from us yes from dexter's lab uh but yeah so let's let's dive right in and do the our like general thoughts and yeah. synopsis and all of that stuff for people who may not have seen this show actually i didn't even pull up uh who this show is by yeah i know it's a new show i think it's from last year and they certainly showed us a lot of names but i didn't like there's not a person i recognized from anything so like i saw the names but they didn't connect to anything in my head yeah so the forest tv series uh is a french crime drama television series created by delinda jacobs and directed by julius berg mm-hmm. there you go does it say who it was written by it doesn't I, I, I guess it was oh i guess all written by delinda jacobs since she is the creator sometimes mm. they do the like oh this person is the creator because they k- 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 came up with the mm-hmm. idea um but yeah so the forest i i found this a while mm-hmm. ago on netflix uh i i guess a couple of months ago i started just being like you know what i'm gonna watch a bunch of foreign content on netflix yeah uh, and i've watched a bunch of korean shows and some french shows i've watched some uh spanish stuff I, 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 yeah, sp- sp- <laughs> Spanish stuff. Um, and some of it is really good. Nice. Yeah, like, uh, I think my favorite so far, there's been a Korean show called Bad Guys Vile City. And I, I love that title. I, yeah, it's a ridiculous name, but I love the, the, that show. Then there was a German show called Babylon Berlin, which mm. I thought was awesome. Um, and both of those are Netflix original series as well. Uh, but this was one of the ones that I kind of put on my Netflix queue just because, oh, that looks good. I like crime shows. It looks like there's a little bit of a horror thing going on in the trailer. Mm-hmm. Uh, didn't really t- turn out to be that. Aww. Um, but I, the, the trailer interested me, so I put it on my Q and I finally pitched it, and this is the one you p- picked. Tell mm-hmm. me, what about my p- pitch, or what 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 did you envision in your mind that, that made you pick this? Melissa? I'm not a big crime person. Like sometimes That's I listen a to the occasion- crime in and huh? of itself. <laughs> Sometimes I listen to the occasional like murder mystery podcast. Sure. Uh, I like those. 
I can get in the mood for those. Uh, like I said, I took like four years of French through like high school and college and I never followed up with it. And I'm like, oh, I, I can get into the mood for a murder every once in a while. I've, I've been wanting to watch something French again. Yeah. And this might be spooky. I always love spooky things. So let's give it a try. There you go. Um. Yeah, it's 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 an in interesting show it's only six episodes so it's mm -hmm. a pretty short one uh yeah. you can watch it all in a day or in a lazy weekend uh if if you guys need something interesting t to watch what did you think of this or or wh what 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 were you expecting first and then <laughs> then what did, did you think because yeah like i i, I I was expecting a little bit more like psychological thriller slash horror mixed in. With yeah, this. I can see that. And that was kind of what I was expecting too. Like I thought it would be spookier. I thought like being centered around a forest, there might be something kind of supernatural going on just like a little bit. That's what I was thinking. And it didn't end up really having that. And I, I missed it for that. And you pitched this, and I'm like, oh, that sounds interesting. And it was interesting, but it was also, like, a, a big bummer. And, like, do you know the joke from Arrested Development where Michael finds the paper bag in the freezer labeled Dead Dove, Do Not Eat? And he opens it, and he looks in the bag, and he says, well, I don't know what I was expecting. <laughs> like, that's how I felt. Like, you knew you signed up for six hours of murder, Melissa. Like, of course it's going to be a bummer. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I'm I'm kind of with you. I was honestly a little bit disappointed with the show, but I think mm -hmm. that's really in part. Well, for the most part, maybe I expected too much of this show. Like like mm -hmm. we said, we were expecting one thing and got something else. I do have another problem with this show that we'll get into once we get into spoilers and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. But besides that, I actually thought the show was pretty good. Yeah, it's. I think it's very competently done, which sounds like a put down. Uh, but like, I think it executes what it wants to do very well. Yeah, and technically, it's very good. There's a lot of wonderful performances in this. Yeah, and it's shot beautifully, and I really like the music. Yeah, it's. Mm -hmm. it, the, yeah, the cinematography especially is go yeah. gorgeous. Um, I I really enjoyed that. It's a little bit slow moving. There it aren't is. very many action scenes or, like, car chases or stuff like that. So it is mm -hmm. more of a traditional kind of crime investigation show. Yeah. Um, and I think they they do an interesting thing where they, they kind of wrap it up at the end of the season. But it's something that if, if Netflix wanted it to go on, they could just yeah. do another case or explore some of these characters a little bit more because there were some really interesting characters. Yeah. Um, but we, since it's so short, we didn't necessarily get to dive in with them. They just, they told the, these, the story that they set out to, uh, and that was that. Synopsis. Do you, do you want to oh. help me out with a short synopsis here? Yeah. There's a small French town on the edge of this big forest and a teenage girl goes missing and they find her body like two days later. And also two of her friends go missing and one of them is the daughter of a local police officer. So it follows like that woman and like the brand new police chief in town and all of these other citizens as they're just trying to find out what happened to these three girls. Yeah. Yeah, so it's it's fairly traditional small town crime story. Um, there's also a new like police chief, right? yeah, I, I guess, or the commissioner, or whoever. Yeah, um, and he's not used to the town. He's more by the books, whereas mm -hmm. some of the other cops are more laid back and it's like oh these guys wouldn't do anything bad i've known them forever and stuff you mm -hmm. know um so there's 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 some some in interesting stuff going on and i think in six episodes they actually do pack in quite a bit yeah uh, yeah there's not really any downtime 
in yeah. this show. Like they do, they do tell a story pretty efficiently. Yeah, and I, I, th- I think as you said, it's very competently told. Too, I think some some other shows out there might have been like, uh, well, hey, we only have six episodes, so that means we need to, you know, like condense things and cut things out in a way that kind of makes the show a little bit more difficult to understand or something mm-hmm. along those lines. Um, but I, I, yeah, I, I, I think this show tells the story really well uh, and everything makes sense. And yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Um, we're about to get into spoiler territory. So if you have not seen the show, uh go pause this do whatever you have to do go watch it it's on netflix Mm -hmm. uh i'm I'm here in america we're both here in america so it's on american netflix i'm sure it is overseas in europe as well since it is Mm -hmm. a french show i'm sure i i don't know how the netflix originals work if it's just a netflix original it's on everywhere in netflix yeah, I don't wherever know. you can get netflix i'm not sure about that because they've they've done the things where it was like it was released on netflix in europe like they, they i think it was who has it arrival it, it was some re- recent sci-fi movie that came to netflix in europe and it hasn't been on Netflix here. Yeah, there might be like know. licensing be agreements with things like ass. that, but I would imagine that a Netflix original, like, you know, if it's got strong subtitles, like they could yeah. put it anywhere. But I don't know what would be stopping them. Netflix usually does that because it is their own show. Oftentimes they have multiple audio tracks, which mm-hmm. I didn't even think to check. This time I just watched it in French. Yeah, I um, looked just because I was I went into that way when I was trying to find out like different subtitle options because I thought the white subtitles were too low contrast. This is a whole thing. But yeah, they didn't have like an English dub or anything like that, but they had like a couple other languages. Because th- th- there's a number of shows that I've seen that they've like dubbed over in English, in other, you know, in, in, in multiple languages and you can pick which which one you want. Um, and they're all, I mean, I feel like watching this dubbed or any kind of foreign show might be a little strange cause it won't match up with the mouths and stuff like that. But yeah. the, the subtitles are all very competent as well. <laughs> uh, yes. They, c- competent might be a weak word. They're all very <laughs> strong. Yeah. It, it, especially if, if, if you, if you like anime and stuff and you're like i hate dubbed and stuff like that (laughs) you realize that someone has to translate it to be a subbed thing too you still have to read the subtitles (laughs) and someone is translating that it's just a matter of you reading it or someone else saying it for you Mm -hmm. um and sometimes there's multiple translations on that um but yeah Good stuff. Good stuff. Mm-hmm. So uh, about to get into spoilers. Quick housekeeping. Um, we just had a, another episode of the Captain's Log where, Melissa, you got to join yeah. us yet again. That's the second mm-hmm. week in a row, yeah. uh, which is pretty neat. Um, and I, I think because of our new recording time, which is Friday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern, Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to be able to join us a lot more often. We don't know if uh-huh. that'll be every week, but you will be there from time to time, which is exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, so if you are listening to this in the live stream, uh, that will be up next week. Yes. And if you are listening to this as a podcast or on YouTube down the road, it should already be out and already up on podcast feed so just go search the whatnots podcast uh on itunes or i I guess you can just search the whatnots and we'll we'll pop up there um other housekeeping go follow us on youtube and on twitch you could absolutely use your support Uh, i think we've reached 30 youtube subscribers and about 25 on twitch uh so we both need we need to get those up our goal is to for 50 of them on on each 50 yes. followers on each so help us out if you have not uh subscribed to either of 
those do us a favor and help us out there. That's all the housekeeping I have. Yeah. So spoilers. Yes. I, I kind of wanted to dive in right away to my other problem that uh-huh. I had with this sh- show. And I'm I'm wondering if maybe this is the same problem you had or if you noticed the same thing mm-hmm. my my so my, my my first thing was um now my mind just t- t- totally went blank it was not what i, I ex- expected right yeah. i expected some supernatural something especially with a name like the forest yes it sounds it's, so it's, imposing it's dark it's imposing it's yeah. mysterious it's creepy, like that's where there's you know? like that's where wicked old ladies who live in candy houses that's mm-hmm. where they are like that's like dark fairy tale stuff it happens in a, a european forest yes exactly and my second problem with this show is the character the teacher i think her name was eve yeah, i also i did not dislike her but i did not like her as much as i think the show thought that i would I think that that was the one element of the show that I was like, did we even need her character? I don't, <laughs> like, I, I, yeah, like, I, I thought she was an interesting character. And yeah. I think that story by itself also would have been a fantastic yeah. television series. I would have loved six a- 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 episodes on that. Because um, yeah. she, I, I guess her backstory is that she she was found when she was a very young girl wandering out of the forest no one knew where she came from all that stuff there was this local doctor that kind of picked her up and took her in and sort yeah. of ad- adopted her got her mm-hmm. help and stuff like that um and she now c- calls him father and stuff like that uh and so there's this mystery of like who is she where is mm-hmm. she from She's from the forest, like, <laughs> ooh, like, ooh, that's strange, you know, yeah. you know, and ultimately she has nothing to do with the, I mean, she, she ties in loosely, uh-huh. but loosely enough that I felt like we didn't, like, you, you could have done without her character entirely, and I yeah. think the show would have been the exact same thing. I, I agree with you that I think I would have rather seen her whole thing as its own show instead of included in just this, like, murder mystery and, like, kidnapping and, like, you know, bad affairs and everything else that's happening in the rest of the town. Every element of something that is kind of weird, like, almost supernatural in the show is all on her. And I realized I would have much rather had it spread around. Like, yeah. I didn't... Like, give somebody else some of that, too. Like, I didn't like that it was all on one character. I think it would have been more interesting to give it to the entire town, to have, like, them also seeing, like, weird, like, I just saw a wolf. Wolves don't live around here. Yeah, like that, like that, I mean, when the wolf appeared, I like, that was one of the first things that popped into my mind. It's like, oh, okay, she's seen this wolf. Wait a minute. What if there is no wolf? wolf you know just like in in the yeah. back of my mind this i like i'm again expecting some kind of supernatural something yes. it's like maybe there is no wolf and i was right mm-hmm. there is technically no wolf like there's no wolves in that I- area supposedly um but that just leads to more questions like yes is is she hallucinating is that like the ghost of someone is that her mom is you know is like was she raised by this wolf you know um is she actually crazy because the the whole town is kind of wondering you know hey maybe this girl is a little bit off her rocker you know um even though she's a t- teacher at the school <laughs> yeah it's like here we are, we are trusting our kids with the yeah, crazy we're, woman we're a small enough town that it's like well we need everybody we can get like you know we don't entirely trust you but you are still allowed to like have a job because we just need somebody to fill the job yeah <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean that that's the thing I I still I still liked her. I liked her yeah. as a character. I was interested in her story. Yeah. I think she was just 
related to the actual like crime plot by six degrees of kevin bacon like she yeah it was like okay i can see how she's related but it's not really necessary yeah for all of this like it yeah. like her the mystery of that like spiral circle and who they, the the <laughs> only like th- that thing didn't factor into the story the only thing that factor in was joe th- this you know, yes. like who is joe which yeah. again i don't think you would have you, you didn't need her to figure that out you didn't exactly. need um the I, manoa i believe i hey yeah i, I think i'm yeah two it was for manoa two, two for two on character na- na- names um, <laughs> this is a rare moment indeed um <laughs> Like we we didn't need him to be like Joe 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 you know he 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 kept repeating that word, mm-hmm. um. Like I I really felt like you like they could have just done the graffiti thing that they did, yeah. And it's just like oh him there, that guy, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know. Um, Another thing I want to say about Eve is that. She's got her adopted father, that doctor, who's very sweet. I liked whenever he would show up. And then when she finally finds out, you know, who she is and where she comes from, we learned that her dad was always searching for her. Like, it seems like her birth dad was pretty cool, too. And I'm like, in a show full of bad dads, why does Eve get to have two good dads? That's not fair. <laughs> She's spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> there was too much of a lot of things laid on her that I would have liked to see him spread around. Okay, yeah. Yeah, Sp- spread the love a <laughs> bit. That's that's one thing. I'm I'm glad they, they stuck to six episodes because yes. it did tighten up the story. But with as much as I didn't get with the Supernatural stuff, I kind of wish there was more, or at least a second season to continue those threads. Yes. Uh, which I I don't know if there will be one. Their uh, Wikipedia page didn't say anything. So, and the show debuted May 30th, 2017 on the Belgian channel La Une. Uh, November 22nd, or t- yeah, t- 21st uh, on France 3 and the series debuted Viewed on Netflix internationally in July 2018. Mm. Um, so we, you know, we might still be another year or so from season two. I want it to seem like they've announced it. Yeah, I want to learn more, like about this town and its citizens, like just the social politics of the whole thing. I could definitely watch another season of that, but like. To have another crime pop up seems almost like far fetched, like in this same town. Well, I, I, another crime of the scale we have just seen. Like they can't come up with like as much murder and kidnapping and terrible stuff as season one had. Like, sure, I, I. I don't think I think if I, again I, I well not again because I haven't mentioned it on this one mm-hmm. I'm I'm always of the mind that you can't really review the show you didn't get exactly right yeah um we can speculate and be like oh I wish they did this or I hope they do that down down the road but that can't really factor in you, mm-hmm. you know um but I I wish. Or I, I guess I'm hoping that if they do continue this, I don't want another crime to kind of pop up naturally. Like, oh, someone else got murdered or someone else mm-hmm. got kidnapped. I c- c- kind of want them to investigate stuff that's already happened. Like who – there was that Celtic cross out in the yeah. middle of the forest. Okay. Like who like is that, you know? Like cases? Yeah. Okay. Um, more of – the 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 mystery of who eve's mother is and mm-hmm. stuff like that um because that there was that very mysterious ending when she's talking to the culprit of the, the, this this whole thing yeah and he says the italian f- phrase i don't remember how to arrivederci pr- yeah which basically means see you later which is also very ominous and like wait you knew something else 
<laughs> why are you saying that thing particularly <laughs> you know not I like think it was you'll just... never tell it's just like i'll see you later <laughs> i think it was because she was leaving the room like that was just the natural point in a conversation to say like well bye and he's like I'll give her the little tease that her mother was from Italy, not from France, and I'll just say it in Italian. But like, I didn't think it was like, now I'm gonna return from the dead, but which would be cool. I'd yeah, be down but for like, a ghost. Yeah, like I I agree with you. Like she was leaving; it was time to say goodbye. But even then, like he could have as like, why be so cryptic about it and just be like, yeah, your mom was Italian. Mm-hmm. Bye. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Like, hey, see you later. Oh, by the way, she was Italian. (laughs) Or, like, she had an Italian accent or something. You know, know, like, like, there's just that that odd odd touch of, like, why did you say it this way? Why that choice of language, of, of phrase? It seemed much more mysterious than I think it actually was meant to be. Yeah, and the way that whole character wraps up, like, Mr. Lopez, like, that thing where he gives her that weird clue and then shoots himself in the head right in front of her, like, was a lot. Like, he's a bad dude, but he's not overly vindictive or cruel in a personal way like that to anybody else, it seems like. I don't know, it just seemed like outside of like, this is a different sort of bad than the bad he has been up until now. Like, where did this come from? Yeah. Let me ask you this. Who do you think the main character was? I... I think that's a tough one to answer. I really thought it was Virginie. And then when they spend so much time with the chief early on, I got to like the chief more, you know, that captain as the show went on. But like, I always considered it like her show the yeah police woman. okay um but by the way the chat is asking what we are talking about we are talking about a netflix original series called the forest it is a french crime show um we are already in spoiler territory uh so if if you do end up wanting to go check it out we have already started talking about that mm-hmm. but should be available to pr- pretty much every, every everyone on netflix um yeah but um so i yeah i j- j- just the 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 whole i, I don't know I, I feel like now i'm just starting to get more and more nitpicky about <laughs> some of the minor things of just like mm-hmm. why did they do this it was like i'm i'm i, I think i'm they've 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 hooked me and that's why yeah it's like, i just I, I i want what was that about who's this guy yeah why yeah is he did why did he say that I learn more about you know? them yes yeah there was so much packed into the show and i loved how much depth there was to that entire town in like little ways and like stuff would pay off later like during jennifer's memorial service when Mr. Lopez comes in and he sits down next to his ex-wife and she like moves away from him. Like, I figured that's what it was. That's just like, it was just another little piece of world building. Like, oh, among all the other drama in this town, like the principal just got divorced recently and Mm -hmm. you know, he still likes his ex-wife more than she likes him. And that's true, but also he's like this terrible murderer and she's, like, got the clues to, like, help take him down. Like, it's that also. Like, I was looking at it as just, like, social world building. But it's also plot world building, too. Yeah. I Like, I, I'm, I'm having a tough time thinking about the main character. I know I, I, I asked, you, asked you that. I think Vir- Virginie is one of them. But mm-hmm. Eve also has... Uh, yeah, they spend like, a lot of time on Eve. Yeah, we spend a lot of time on her, and then there's the brand new police captain. Yeah, too, and he he comes in, and I I think we spend fairly equal t- t- time with all of them. I think so. Um, but it like I I think that was that was one of the things that made it tough to kind of dive into the town deeper is that we didn't. Like, there was no in-character for us. Like, yeah. I, I feel like the in-character yeah. should have been the new police ca- ca- 
captain because he's the one that's experiencing this town basically for the first time mm-hmm. right like he's fairly new like the the parents at the school don't don't even recognize him they're like oh he must be the the new guy mm-hmm. so i felt like if we had seen this more from his perspective like we could have kind of discovered the mysteries of this town mm-hmm. better if 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 that makes sense i mean what do you think ah uh, yeah i i think it would be kind of handy to have like just a point of view character or like maybe to make it the new police chief but the new police chief is also like kind of this antagonist character like he keeps kind of. butting heads with Virginie, who's, like, the first character we meet, like, uh, well, it's the first character we get to know pretty well in, like, episode one, and she's, like, the person we're really sticking with at the beginning, so she was the one, like, I gravitated to, and she ends up having, like, the most, like, personal high stakes involved Mm -hmm. in everything, like, it's not just, like, I have a job to do, I have to help my community, it's, like, directly her family that is, like, involved in this thing so she was the most compelling character to me there was also okay this show had like a lot of twists and turns but nothing that was like really bonkers like nothing that left me shocked really it's like oh okay i can see how you got there yeah (laughs) i could see how there was another murder i could see that (laughs) like everything felt kind of familiar like i'm not a big crime drama person but like every this seemed like a combination of a lot of very classic things not that it was like really overdone or hackneyed or it's full of cliches or anything like there's a difference between cliches and just like familiar traditional plot points yeah i mean things become cliches and stereotypes for a reason Mm -hmm. not necessarily because they're true or stuff like that but just because like it's often it's it's used a lot or it's seen a lot you know Mm -hmm. um and yeah like i i I felt like there was a lot of it's not i mean yeah like stereotypical but i i hesitate to use that that word exactly it it, it was all it was all used and told very well yeah, like, nobody's a real stock character. Like, the <clears throat> the captain, whose name I keep forgetting, unfortunately. I've got most of everybody else's name, so I forget his. I don't He's remember. not, like, this traditional, like, hard, gruff, like, I want your badge on my desk. Like, he's not that guy, but he's still, like, so he's not that cliche character He's a little bit of a stickler still, though. But he's still, like, he feels kind of familiar like characters like that see everybody's like they're not stock characters they've just got this kind of bit if that makes sense sure and so i was if i i saw a lot of things coming and even if it was something i didn't see coming like i wasn't shocked i was like okay yeah that makes sense and there was one thing i kept predicting that i was shocked never showed up interesting what was that I spent, like, from see- episode two on, I spent most of this series thinking Virginie was going to turn out to be pregnant. Huh. Because the first thing you see her do, she's just, like, having breakfast with her husband. And oh. she's complaining, like, oh, yeah, oh, I'm getting this fat tire on my middle. I'm gaining so much weight. And, like, and then there's one of the makes- c- comment about her breasts yeah, like, being one firmer. Of, yeah. Yeah, one of them makes okay. a joke, like, yeah, but at least your breasts look good. Which I didn't think anything about. But then when they get to the forest and they find Jennifer's body... She throws up. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's like a shocking, gruesome thing. And then she throws up again. And I'm like, that's too many. That's suspicious now. (laughs) She's pregnant. And now she's going to be like this husband who like betrayed her and like slept with this 16-year-old girl they've known most of their lives and like is their daughter's best friend. Now she has to have a new child with this man. And like, what does that mean for their relationship and for the relationship with their other two kids? None of that, none of it showed up. I And like, I was shocked. I was so surprised. I thought they were going to pull that out at some point. And also to add to this thing of like, okay, I have to stop and like rest. Like she's barely sleeping. She's barely eating. She's like, okay, I have to stop for the health of me and my baby. But also the child I already have is kidnapped out there and I have to find her. Yeah. So I have to keep pushing myself. Like, I kept expecting it to be there, and it was never there. I was so surprised. Yeah, I mean, I 
I think, again, that's one of those things, like, if they end up doing a season two, yes. I don't know if they will or not. Um, I mean, that could potentially be something they pull out. I, I like, I feel like that's plausible. Yes, it's like yes, she, it's she just started getting pregnant. I, I, I guess that's not necessarily the process has begun. Pu- yeah, <laughs> 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 that's not how it works. <laughs> um, but yeah, like, like it, it was just never important for season one, and now it's like, okay, now she's having to deal with the aftermath. She's already mm-hmm. kicked this guy out. She's pregnant uh d- 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 like that there's that end scene where everything works out and they had that big old family h- hug but still what do you do knowing that yes. he's yes. a pedophile and oh. that like, like yeah um i also want to talk about the character of her husband his name is vincent sure i was fascinated by that guy not so much the character but like that actor's portrayal of that character is really good like, that's such an interesting performance because, like, there's characters you love and characters you love to hate. Sure. And Vincent was, like, a character you love to see be pathetic. Like, he was <laughs> something so unique. He's such, like, this wimp, like, meek, wet noodle of a man the entire time. <laughs> and he's so sheepish. And, like, like, he spends his time lying. And then once he decides not to lie anymore, he's pretty open about stuff. And... But, like, when he makes the right choice, like, when he, like, says, to the you know, like, when he goes with the police chief, like, yep, I'm not going to fight this anymore. You need my DNA sample so that you can tell I had sex with Jennifer. Like, he just, like, he gives in and he does it. And it's not like, oh, I appreciate that you're doing the correct thing, Vincent. That's the right thing to do. It's like, Vincent, you wimp. You're not even trying anymore. Like, <laughs> I was fascinated by that guy, and I kept waiting to see, like, is he going to do something really crazy? I mean, he oh, no, he's not. Did. I, he like, snuck into the police headquarters and tried to tamper with the evidence, but failed he, miserably. I at know, it. and, like, that was as crazy as he got. Like, I wanted to see if he was going to, like, pull a knife on somebody or something like that. But no, he's the same wet noodle beginning to end, and, like... It got to the point where I just became so, like, not really fond of him, but just like, oh, I'd like to see what this character does. I'd like, you know, to see what's he going to do. Like, I like the actor that's doing this job. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. To the point where at the end where Virginia's like, I want you out of the house. Like, I felt kind of bad because I'm like, oh, this means I don't get to see him anymore. I want to see what he's going to (laughs) do. Man, I, 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 I had something uh kind of like you where you were like mm-hmm. i'm expecting one thing and it never yeah. happened yeah i i had a, an idea in my mind of who the culprit was oh who, who did you think it was the, i thought it was the doctor i thought it was eve's father for a I while th- there i thought it, he might come up but i was more suspicious of the principal I see that's also I guess that's my third problem with the show Mm -hmm. not as it's not as big as a problem because I feel like it happens often enough and it it can sometimes make for a good twist or a good like shocking moment I felt like we didn't get to spend time with the principal though like we don't yeah we saw him there's the one scene in episode one when he stops the teacher because his taillight was out and that was it, basically. And, and he then, gives yeah. the, we see him in, like, in that memorial scene for Jennifer, like, in the church. And then also, like, he gives that speech to the kids, like, just after Jennifer's like, body has been we'll found. And it's her. a really good speech. Like, it's, like, he says, like, really important, valid things. Like, he's like, go home, like, talk to your parents, talk to each other, like, talk to us staff. And most importantly, talk to Jennifer. Tell her the things you never got to tell her. And it's a very genuine, true, like, speech from an authority figure to, like, young people dealing with death. But, (laughs) like, despite the fact that he's the one who killed her. Yeah. Like, I thought that juxtaposition was interesting that he murdered the girl. But he also knows exactly the right way to comfort her peers. That was interesting that this man could do both of those things. Yeah, and and I, I, I think that's it's a really 
kind of creepy j- 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 yeah. j- position to like figure out who it was and then think back on on that yes but again i don't feel like we spent time with him like i don't know it, his yes. character and so yeah. when it was revealed that it was him i was like really like <laughs> I, I, I like i'm kind of disappointed that like i it was just this this guy off in you know he's a side character yeah um because they when they narrowed it down to like it's someone we know you know mm-hmm. it's it, you, you know it's like oh shit it must it it's one of the characters that we have spent a lot of time with mm-hmm. they spent more time on thierry i believe yes, how you say thierry. his name they, they they spent more time on him they spent more time on the doctor they spent more time time on eve maybe it 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 was the uh it was henson and it's that that's another thing he just hasn't told Mm. anyone you 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 know like i was thinking it was like it has to be one of them and once they got to to that it was like well okay it can't be vincent because he already confessed to this one thing it can't be this guy because like they want me to think it's 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 yeah harry because he's the, the 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 terrible (laughs) <laughs> criminal of the uh, of the town you know yeah i want to talk about terry too um yeah so i like i i i i was just like it has to be the doctor he's too good how how did he just find eve how does he find these children <laughs> how does he you, you know what help did he really give her you know we don't know this stuff and i think that was Part of the like, I want something more supernatural. Yeah, and I and feel like, like this doctor, maybe d- drugs and therapy, and this kind of psycho thriller thing happening there yeah, would have been fantastic. The thing about the doctor is that he is so sweet, and like the principal, like he seems like a good principal, but you don't think like, oh, look at that sweet old man, the way you do about the sweet doctor. Old doctor, yeah, yeah, like the doctor. I can see how you would think this doctor's too good to be true. No, real quick, what I wanted to say about Thierry. I also thought he was really interesting. He's a and another fantastic actor, too. Yeah, yeah. I loved so many of the actors in this show. Like, Thierry had this kind of integrity and, like, pride and strength to him that Vincent did not. Yes. And I love the juxtaposition that, like, both of them are such screw-ups in, in different ways, but also, like, in terms of their actions, but also the way they think about themselves and the way they live their lives like i liked i didn't like how many bad dads there were in the show but i liked that there was at least a variety you're not repeatedly seeing the same kind of bad dad (laughs) there's different ones yeah i mean it's 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 interesting because when you compare those two characters Mm -hmm. like outwardly vincent is the more normal like he has a a good family a steady job or or something something yeah yeah Uh, like you meant there was another thing that bugged me like he mentions like i have a meeting with a client and i'm like i don't know if i know what you do i mean it's it's not necessarily important important yeah. to know that but it, it's it's still one of those things it's like oh okay they have a steady family whereas I, thierry is is more of the like single father his daughter mm-hmm. wants absolutely nothing to do yeah. with him because she thinks he's an alcoholic good for nothing you know um mm-hmm. and so it's just it's this like out outwardly he is the more pathetic character and not vincent um but then yeah once you get into their character character like yeah Thierry's doing all of this for his daughter so he can like give her a better life and so that mm-hmm. she won't turn out like him yeah um and he's he's tr- trying but he's not yes. trying in the right ways you know <laughs> yeah like Thierry is like moving forward and Vincent is just like keeping up appearances he's just kind of moving like, Terry's trying to move up. Vincent is just trying to keep a status quo. Yeah. And, like, that's the difference between them. And, like, uh, just briefly, what bugged me about why we didn't know what Vincent did is that this is such a small town. Whatever he does, might he might be, like, the person that does it. Yeah. Like, like how this town has, like, a doctor. A he is the lawyer. Or, force. like, the, yes, exactly. the marketing person, you know? Like, I was wondering just, like besides like his family and like the people his family knows like the parents like the kids his kids play with you know the other parents at school 
we went offline. Oh! I don't know why. Uh, Twitch is telling me we went offline, and that is not true. Uh. Let's see here. That's weird. Now we're back. Okay. Uh, con continue. You might have to <laughs> back up a bit and re-say the sentence you just said. Okay. So besides, like, the social impact of Vincent's actions, besides outside of his family, you know, like, the people his family knows, like, their friends, the other parents at school, like, are there, like, is there professional fallout? Are there people who are yeah. like, he was my lawyer, for instance, like, but I'm not going to have him finish putting my will together, but now who else am I going to get to do it for me? He was the yeah. one we had. Like, yeah. the resources, like, social resources are so scant in this little town. Like, if somebody's, like, they're not just going to have another principal. Like, that's going to be a struggle for that school. Not just to say, oh, our old principal was a monster, but to be like... Yeah. I mean, it might be months before we can get any kind of new principal in here. Even the cops can like constantly had to get help from yeah. other districts. Like, oh, you guys are going to have to send back up again. <laughs> yeah. And <laughs> I like that, that they were again. They were so reliant on like Charleville, which is like the metropolitan outside of them. Yeah. They're it's got this real like the town is one unified cluster it's them versus charleville like there's one investigator woman you see occasionally and you get like her name but like she gets like three minutes of screen time and like no personality like the outside world they aren't characters they're just they are, they're just here to feed the town resources yeah yeah one other thing i thought was interesting and uh -huh. I guess kind of relates to both Eve and Vincent. Eve is not a police officer. Yes. Yet she was doing all sorts of her own investigations and stuff yeah, like that. And I was... the cops were just okay with it. Yeah, like, I was surprised. Like, you see her, like, independently go look in Manoa's little, like, hut in the woods and i'm like nobody blocked that off like the police aren't nobody's still looking at that thing yeah well i, I, I mean I, I guess we don't know how long it's been but they like mm -hmm. the police did look at that stuff they did catalog it all and do all that stuff so maybe they moved on or just moved the stuff that they thought was important out of there but it's it was weird to me to see her I mean, I, 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 I guess it's not weird for me to see her do this stuff since she's a teacher and it's her students. And so she's wanting to help and investigate yeah. and stuff like that. Like, I, I kind of expect there to be some people, like, wanting to conduct their own investigations. Yeah. It almost feels like she should be doing more of what Vincent is doing, where he's just kind of hanging around like, hey, can I have an update, please? And, like, Vincent should be more like, I'm getting in there. I'm rolling which up is, my sleeves and I'm yeah, looking for my daughter. which is what I wanted Vincent to do. Yes. And it was just like, you're, like, you're constantly asking how you can help. The police obviously need help. I can see the conflict of interest yes. with it being your daughter. But then again, they kept on the wife on the case. And that's usually, like, the first thing you do if you're connected to the case. You're you're off of it, you, you know? Um and and but it, it was just like well why don't like you're, like he, like he said like i'm just i just stay here and cook like <laughs> there's nothing for me to do like why aren't you going out in the woods and looking yes. for stuff why aren't like why aren't you trying vincent to do this was stuff? looking for somebody to tell him what to do he had no spirit of his own to find himself something for him to do besides yeah. just like cook dinner <laughs> Yeah, and, I, like, I, I understand at the same time he was also kind of involved, and so that's yeah, and kind, kind of, of why he didn't want to outskirts. move things along. Yeah, yeah. But it, it's it's one of those things, like, despite him having this relationship with this minor, his daughter is missing. Like, yeah. Like, it, I mean, he does kind of realize, okay, I'm going to have to fess up to this mistake mm -hmm. that I made, in order to help find my daughter and that's gonna 
fuck me me over you know Mm -hmm. um but it like i i just i felt yeah like i felt like he could have done something like what are you waiting for like just go do something you you know like don't just stand there Mm -hmm. (laughs) yeah that was that's what i was talking about before wet noodle and i'm like are you gonna like are you gonna do do anything something (laughs) Come on, Vincent. <laughs> let's I don't know. Let's talk about the kids. We've exclusively the talked kids. about the adults. Which kid do you want to talk about first? There's a lot of kids. Uh, I don't know. I Oh, just I wanted to talk about them in general. Like I feel like they were all well written and they they felt authentic. Yeah. Uh the one weird thing that I thought was uh the was m- What's her name? Maya? Yeah, yeah. Maya's brother. Oh! He was, I was kind also... of a weird character. Just like they didn't tell him. It's also a small town, so how does he not see the news? How does he not hear kids talking about it at school? Like, oh, Maya's missing. Blah, 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 you know? And he's just like, so... is wh- Where's Maya? Is she sleeping at her friend's house again? Like, what? No. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> He's inherited all of his father's dopiness. <laughs> yeah. I liked that other kid because, like, he wasn't necessary to the plot pretty much at all. Like, yeah. the one clue he, like, gives to his parents, like, they could have found on their own, like, the video Maya took of herself for, like, the prostitution website. Yeah. They could have found that on their own without him. But I like that he was around just for, like, emotional reasons. Yeah. Like, especially... Like, when Vincent says to Virginie, like, like, hey, we we have have another another kid kid at home. Somebody needs to watch him. Like, you know, as terribly as he is, Vincent at least knows, like, he he has kids and the kids need things. Like, he's not doing as much as he could to help Maya, but Virginie is also completely ignoring this other kid they have. And he's like, well, I'm all this kid has. I'll cook him dinner. I'll take him to his soccer game. If I can't do anything else, I can do that. Yeah. Yeah, I like that he was just not forgotten about. Like, he could be so easy to forget, and that's kind of the point of the thing. Like, Virginie kind of forgets he's there, but the story doesn't. The story will check in on that kid, like, just enough. Like, he's not there more than he's needed, but I like that they included him in appropriate amounts just as this kind of, like, emotional set dressing. What did you think of Maya and I guess her name is pronounced Ocean? Or... Yeah, Ocean. Yeah. Ah. <gasps> Which is a fucking sweet name. <laughs> yes. Like Jeez. I'm I I'm now gonna use that when I play R RPGs or something. I'm gonna name my character Ocean. <laughs> dope as hell. Uh, yeah, what did you think of them? Because they they are obviously heavily involved in the case and mm-hmm. everything that happens, especially since Maya is one of the ones that goes missing for a little I, while. I liked them, and this was another thing I was expecting and it didn't show up. Like, in episode one, you're thinking this is going to be more of, like, a Veronica Mars thing where the other kids are helping to look for their missing friend and they're not because Mm -hmm. they go missing all of a sudden. So I was expecting them to be like junior detectives. And the fact that they weren't isn't really a problem. It's just different than what I thought might happen. Yeah. Um, Which, yeah, like, uh, I I, I guess it's one of those things of like, how realistic is that actually if we do Mm -hmm. get the the junior detectives league? (laughs) Like... That's not. That's not really all that realistic, you know. You, you, you know, um, but it's it's still it's that those are the kinds of stories that people like to see, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, especially in detective fiction, some mm-hmm. like young detective yeah. stuff is Nancy always, Drew, Hardy yeah. Boys, yeah. Mary Kate and Ashley Mysteries. <laughs> okay, <laughs> <laughs> that might be a little lower on the <laughs> on the pantheon, but uh. <laughs> but yes um i like I, I i liked maya's character even though we didn't get much of her it, it, it's one of those things like as all of this is happening the town is kind of unraveling they start blaming each other 
though as we've kind of mentioned before since the the series was so short we didn't get much of that but we got enough to understand that this is happening Mm -hmm. right um and i kind of would have liked to see more about maya and have me care about her a little bit more um in in the sense that I, i i didn't know her too well i know she is a kid she's obviously yeah. adopted because she's not of the, the same ethnicity mm-hmm. or nationality or something um and like i i like that and i like that they don't mention that it's just it's just a thing and they yeah. move on um but like I, I think seeing her in that video when they find that like hidden room like that should have been a lot more emotional than i think it turned out to be like mm-hmm. I, I i don't think that beat hit as hard as it should have yeah of like we actually finally get to see her and it's a pre-recorded video but it's it's like it's a recent one so now we know she actually is alive for sure you know we're mm. not just taking someone else's word like this was recorded yesterday yeah you know i yeah i think maya was she was a daughter more than she was her own person. Like now thinking back on it. Yeah. How much do we know about Maya? Like what are her hobbies? Like, what is she good at? What does she want to be when she grows up? Like mm-hmm. who are her other friends, you know, besides Jennifer and Ocean? Like, what does she like to do in school? Like a lot of that is miss would have had it. And I think Ocean had the strongest personality out of the three kids. Like you could, like she felt a lot more vibrant, a lot more purposeful. Like you had, you had a clear idea had of some good what she wanted. Scenes. Yeah, yeah. I, I I think with Maya, the scene I liked her the most in is when she confronts her father. And yeah, is like, I know what you did, and that's yeah. disgusting as shit. <laughs> like, yeah. how dare you? You know, uh, and I like I think that moment is really emotional, and that makes me get invested with her character and that drama there of what is vincent gonna do now you know yeah. what is maya gonna ultimately do how is, yeah ultimately nothing but like how <laughs> is that how is that gonna p- play out i really liked that scene and i think yes. that was the only kind of scene that we got like that from maya yeah um, and ocean on the other hand, I think we, you know, since we see her a little bit more and she's not one of the g- 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 girls that go missing, we do get her a little bit more and we get a lot more smaller moments with her, whether if it's with her father or there's that one scene uh, where Eve finds her at the bus stop and then they go for a walk and they have a talk. Yeah. That scene was fantastic when yeah. she's just like, when she's kind of... Re- I, I I guess not necessarily realizing, but thinking she is like her father in the sense that yeah. they're just fuck ups, and it like she has, like she it, it seems like she wants to be a, like e- either a fashion model or a fashion designer or yeah. some like she has dreams that are bigger than that town. Yes, you, you know, and so like yeah, it's like I I I want to see more of her. I want to see where she goes, and she has that that one like final moment where she delivers the letter to the wife of the guy that bought her virginity. That's a weird sentence, but yeah, yeah and she, yeah. she and she, she, she's like, look, all of this is my fault. And no, no, she was given the letter to uh, that was Jennifer's oh, parents. Yes, yeah, that um my mistake but yeah i mean she like she's trying to kind of make amends for what she did she realizes it's 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 her fault and she's going Mm -hmm. to have to pay for that right um and 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 she's gonna have to deal with that the rest of her life and she's at a really interesting crossroads because her father is at a a similar type of thing but much later on in life and so it's this idea of like well, we both obviously need to pay for what we've done, but like, how is that going to affect the rest of our lives? Like, yeah. is, is this just the end for me? Is this it? Or can I move on? So. Another thing I think really sets Ocean and Maya apart from each other is that we get to see Ocean's room. It is yeah. a fantastic room. I loved it. I wish I had a room like that. I wish and I, I had a teddy bear stuffed full of money. 
I just wish I, I just wish I had like ass was stuffed pink. full of money. <laughs> <laughs> I just wish I had like pretty pink fairy lights and like little pictures of my friends stuck up all over the place. Like it was like the perfect. Yeah. It was my ideal teen girl room, and I don't think we get to see Maya's room. Or if we do, like, I don't remember it. It's very brief. We, yeah. We, we look in there, and that, I think that's when her mom realizes she's not in the room, and she leaves. So Yeah, so it's just like a plot yeah. thing. It's not like a demonstration of personality. Like, I think yeah. we see Ocean go up to her room to sulk at one point, which is a more character-building moment instead of a plot-building moment. Like, I wish we just had more glimpses into you know Maya's personality what she likes you know how she decorates her room it's a very important teen girl thing yeah yeah es- especially at that age there she's 16 yeah so interesting stuff um i don't know is there anything else i want to t- t- talk about we've mentioned I... eve i've mentioned the <laughs> principal it sounds like mm-hmm. you have something you want I would, to i just want to briefly up. Like, there were a lot of characters that I thought were interesting. Like, I was interested to see what Vincent would or would not do, for instance. Right. Uh, like, I, there were characters I was intrigued by, but the character I actually loved the most was that other cop who mostly sat at the desk. Like, the, Julian, like, the like, technology Yeah, dude. like the chubby guy with the mustache. I loved him. Like, I am always on the side of just, like, a schlubby guy trying his best. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to give props to that guy. There, there you go. Um, I, I think the last thing I wanted to mention, I, I said that I liked Thierry's actor. Yeah. Um, I think he, there was another for French crime show that I watched on Netflix. Oh. I don't know if it's a Netflix original, uh, but I, if I'm not mistaken, that actor is the main actor in this other show, and the show is called Deep. It's okay. It's three episodes. They're all about an hour long, and it's a black and white crime noir show, and it is, is like, super nonstop. Like, oh, nice. it's, it's, it's just no, bu- 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 no bu- bullshit. We're, we're just gonna say everything we need to say, sh- show you the things we need to show you, and that's it. Nice. Uh, and so it moves super fast, uh, but it's fantastic, and it's really in- intense. And he's like, he's this older cop detective who sh- probably should be retiring. He's also hallucinating. And stuff like that. So it's this race of like, hey, you shouldn't be working this case. Uh, We didn't actually let you work on this thing. But he's still going out and solving it. So that is also a show worth checking out on Netflix. (laughs) I have a fun. I have a final thing to say about Vincent. It's kind of related. And I keep talking about this guy. Like he's such... He's such a scumbag, and he's not that important. He doesn't do anything, but I'm fascinated by the way he, <laughs> by just who he is. What a weird character. Like I said <laughs> earlier, like, there aren't characters you love to see be pathetic like this guy. He's so almost comedic in just how, like, sheepish he is about everything like and how, how he like blank his face is yeah, at just t- like, times uh, <laughs> and he fumbles that like sneak yeah. into the police station and like he like he can't get the box open and he has to like crouch down behind the box and he's like oh i just came in and used the bathroom before i left bye like he's such a dope to almost almost a comedic level and so i wondered I don't know any of these actors. Like, I don't yeah. know their stories. What if that is, like, some French comedian who this is his first attempt at getting into drama? And they're like, we want this guy to be kind of pathetic. Let's get that guy. Let's see what that guy can do. Because, like, it's a, a big impact on a story, like, sometimes an actor's previous roles and, like, your vision of that actor. And, like, That's oh, I've always true. seen this person play this type of character. Now there's somebody else. And We're so, not familiar with that actor, though, so we, we can only, only speculate. So that I'm being like, said, 
I, I was just, I was just gonna say you're 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 right in the sense that sometimes an actor can get typecast. Yeah, you know, John K- 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 Krasinski, we all know him from the <laughs> Office. Yeah, and he's this like sweet, funny, adorable jokester, but now he's trying to get out of that and be like the action guy. Yeah, yeah. And some people are okay with it. Some are like, I don't know. But at the same time, I feel like comedic actors often can do drama very well yes, because they yes. understand timing and like when lines n- actually need to be delivered and how, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and the, like, yeah, like the, the 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 impact of that timing. So I I mean, I'm not f- familiar with that character's other or that actor's <laughs> other roles i yeah i mean it just i i don't know he's a uh, vincent's a weird character i just found myself inventing this like second meta level of storytelling because i'm like okay is the guy playing the chief like is he known for playing characters like this or is he like a friendly sitcom dad you know is he just like <laughs> and like this is a dark turn for him like i'm trying to imagine what the meta level is of like yeah okay What's like a French speaking person of, seeing? Speaking of him, uh, the 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 new captain, we also d- don't get his backstory. Yeah, something happened to his wife. Yes, or I, be- or between him and his wife, and we don't know what that is. We don't know if they're divorced or if she's dead or if she was murdered or something. Who knows? Or if she got sick? Who knows? The um, do- like he kind of has this a. Ab- fondness for eve the two of them and his daughter he also is a teenage daughter she sees it and she kind of encourages it like you know dad i'm not going to be here forever i'm going to go away to, i'm going to go away to college and i don't want you to be alone and she says they're not all going to be like mom and i didn't know if that was a line like something bad happened with mom or, like yeah mom was a terrible p- p- person yeah. she was the- unreliable and mm-hmm. didn't cocaine and who knows what you know (laughs) yeah or even just like even if she didn't do anything bad maybe just something terrible befell her like she got like terminally ill and he had to spend all these years caring for her and she's just letting him know like hey that was like a one in a million thing like you know the next woman you find will be perfectly fine or if it's something like dad i know you're not gonna find a woman who was like mom so don't try and do that like don't try and find some woman to be my new hero. That's okay. Just whoever you like is fine. Like, yeah. they're not all going to be like mom is like a release of standards or something like that. Yeah. I don't know. Then, like, I don't know if that line was very strongly meant to indicate something and I didn't quite get it or if it was meant to be that kind of purposefully vague of you know you could read into that past relationship so many different ways and it, on one hand that like not knowing a lot of these characters backstories yeah or like starting to understand like oh they're like this character has some mystery about them mm-hmm. that's kind of what makes this show so interesting and why yes. I want it, like why it's worth watching at the same time i like they don't get into it so it's it, you know it's kind of a letdown at the same time mm-hmm. of just like well that's like i want to know more about these characters um so I, again that's so- something they could potentially explore if there is a second season mm-hmm. of this which again we don't know if there will be or not i i would be intrigued to see it because this town has been destroyed like yeah. this wasn't a story that had an impact on like a handful of people or a couple families it's like that entire town's foundation has been shook and you know like i imagine in a town that small the high school principal's a pretty you know he's like a pillar of the community probably and if that guy is you know taken very much taken down from that role and there's this vacuum in the entire society like how do you go on from that yeah interesting stuff they i mean they 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 have some places they couldn't go if there's yeah. a season two which is good so um i think that's about all i have yeah. to say on this show 
any final thoughts it was good i i i en- enjoyed it there were a couple odd choices uh yeah yeah that's yeah. kind of a that sums it up again the cinematography is gorgeous yes there's a lot of like aerial shots of them above the Mm -hmm. forest as it's super foggy and stuff like that and it's beautiful Mm -hmm. yes yeah it's it's a well done show like it's very grim like i think that was the strongest thing i didn't like about it just in terms of my own personal tastes like it's a bummer (laughs) but like the the plot is well done there's really good emotional moments like this has got a good like just family and community storyline with wonderful performances in it. So if you're, if you can handle like a murder mystery, like a tough, gruesome murder mystery, try this one. Yeah. If people liked this, what else might you recommend them? I I had started to ask this in our like spoiler alert housekeeping section yeah. right before that and I forgot to do it this time so it's back at the end for this mm-hmm. episode but what might you recommend I would recommend the movie Fargo okay yeah which is also about murder in a small town with this policewoman investigating it and she actually is pregnant in that one and so watching this thinking Virginie was pregnant and I'm like how does this relate to Fargo? Like, there's already such a well-known story about a pregnant policewoman investigating a murder in a small town. Like, why are you doing it again? Like, what's your twist on it? Have you seen the Fargo television series? I have not seen that yet. It's decent. I've heard, like, the first season was pretty good and the other ones are, like, hit or miss. I've, I I mean, I, I, I hear that people love it. I wasn't a huge fan of season one of the show. Mm. It got really good at the final two episodes. Okay. And then I was, and and some things happened in there, and I was like, oh, well, they just ruined it now. But mm. apparently each season of that show is a new story, like yes. new characters and stuff like that. Um, so you can kind of j- jump in whenever. But, but, yeah, it has that, like, small town mystery crime murder or something happened in there so Fargo is a little bit more whimsical though it, yes. it, it, it can yep. get kind of wacky at times mm-hmm. um, but in a very like dark and dry way yes so that's that that's good stuff um I I mentioned that show deep I would mm-hmm. recommend that that's also a French crime show that's a lot more fast paced than this though um but it's it's just like if you want another french crime show with a crime noir style um yeah go check that one out i would also say let me see is there <laughs> i'm looking at my comic books on my shelf oh yeah i don't know i might if you want something a little bit more supernatural, mm. I would say Rachel Rising. Okay, uh, is yeah. a comic book. We read uh, Strangers in Paradise a long mm-hmm. time ago. We did an episode on that of the review show, uh, so you guys can go further back in our iTunes feed and find that one. Um, but it's by the same creator, Terry Moore, and it is more of a mystery it is more of a supernatural deals with witches and stuff like that i think i also recommended this when we watched or when we read sabrina yeah um the chilling adventures of sabrina Mm -hmm. um yeah like it it has a bit more of that supernatural stuff because there's witches involved uh but it is also like murder mystery kind of small town vibes what's out there we don't really know um so that would also be something that i would recommend yeah and if you want just forests in the supernatural like you're like i for i don't care about murder mystery i just want spooky forest you can go listen to tannis yes yeah go listen to tannis as well Mm -hmm. um Let's see. I, I guess that wraps up our discussion on that. Melissa, it is your turn to start pitching uh, what we are going to do for this next week. 
okay, I spent all week trying to figure out what these three pitches Hard were going to be. Hard work. Yeah, yes. Okay, so we are on the verge of Thanksgiving. Mm-hmm. We're the weekend before. Well, Thanks- yeah, so this As we record episode this, yes. is, we, we, we're recording this the weekend before the Thanksgiving weekend. It will come out after Thanksgiving has already happened. So we hope you yes. stuffed yourselves with turkeys. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah. Multiple turkeys, each yes. of you. Mm-hmm. So Thanksgiving means the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, and the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade means live Broadway musical numbers. Okay. <laughs> so this time of year and musicals have always been like intertwined for me. So Kyle, I have three musicals for you this week. Wonderful. <laughs> you don't sound super thrilled. I I actually okay. don't think I've seen very many musicals if any and if i did it was a long time ago and i don't remember it and i know in the history of the show you and paul listened to the soundtrack to hamilton when that hit it big and musicals have like a number has come up and stuff you and i watched like there's the putting on the ritz and young frankenstein there's the godspell number and wet hot american summer (laughs) (laughs) okay so pitch number one Soon she shall return, so it's time to visit our old friend, practically perfect in every way, Mary Poppins. Ah, Mary Poppins. <laughs> there we go. I was like, soon she shall return. I've never heard of that musical. No, no. Mary Poppins. Th- that's my tagline for the pitch. Yeah, Mary Poppins Returns is coming to theaters here in the coming weeks. Sort of a, a continuation of the original story. This is a 1964 film from Walt Disney. It blends live action and some animation. They go into like this animated wonderland. And Julie Andrews plays a magical nanny sent to like uh, early 20th century London to take care of these two kids. And Dick Van Dyke is their wacky poppins, y'all. <laughs> yes, yes, nothing to do with Yondu, unfortunately. <laughs> Yeah, so that's a, a classic musical, beautiful yes, songs, and I really wanted, like, a kid's musical on here, because that's okay. the way a lot of young people are introduced to the, the art of the musical, is through Disney films, sure. animated or not. Okay, so that's pitch number one. Pitch number two is one of my favorite movie musicals. This is Little Shop of Horrors from 1986. Mm-hmm. Remember a couple weeks ago when we watched an American Werewolf in London? I'm like, that's yes. Frank Oz. And you're like, I don't know who Frank Oz is. Yes. He directed this movie. Okay. He stars Rick Moranis, Ellen Green, oh, who you, you would know as one of the, the ants in Pushing Daisies. Haven't seen Pushing Daisies. You haven't? I thought nope. you had. Okay, well, I'll put it on the list for the future then. <laughs> Note to self, pitch this to Kyle later. <laughs> so, numbers in it. So, yeah, it stars. Uh, I know who Rick Moranis is, though. Mm-hmm. Tim, Ellen Green, Steve Martin. I know. There's Steve a Martin cameo is. from John Candy. There's a cameo from uh, Bill Murray. It's them and a big puppet. This a show is about. Puppet. <laughs> this movie is about uh, Rick Moranis plays this guy who works in a struggling florist shop and he's a big plant nerd. He's got all these plants he takes care of and he finds this mysterious plant and he's like, I don't know what this is. I don't know what this needs to survive, but it's mine. I'm going to take care of it. And he finds that it loves blood. Like he accidentally like pricks his blood. finger. Yeah, he accidentally like pricks his finger and it's like a Venus flytrap sort of thing and the whole mouth like latches onto his finger. And so he starts feeding this thing blood and it grows bigger and bigger and bigger and it talks to him and it taunts him like, feed me, feed me more. And he's becoming like super well known. Like everybody's like, I must see that strange and unusual plant. While I'm here in the shop, I might as well buy five dozen roses. Why not? So it helps his business. It helps... You know, the girl in the shop he has a crush on. and it's Amazing. Just this kind of wacky, musical, like, dark romantic comedy with a talking plant from space. Amazing. Okay. And pitch number three is Holy Musical Batman. Have you heard of this? No. <laughs> okay. Have you heard about a very Potter musical? 
I wouldn't put it past me to have heard about it and have it gone in one ear and out the other. <laughs> okay. There is a production team called Team Star Kid, and they put on a full length. I've seen like, Star Kid. It wasn't that a movie back in the nineties. This is different. <laughs> <laughs> they put on this full like two and a half hour production of an original parody musical called okay. A Very Harry Potter Musical. Sure. It became the, and like they put it up on YouTube, you know, under like full parody laws and everything, and it became this huge hit. And they made two more of those things. Like, they made a trio of those. This is where Darren Chris came from. If you're familiar with Darren Chris, he hit it big after being this Harry Potter. <sighs> okay. I, I you're, you're talking to a newbie here in, <laughs> in terms of musicals. And this team has gone on to produce a ton of musicals some of them are original and a lot of them are like pop culture parody things sure like they've got a full-length musical all about jafar like this is aladdin from jafar's point of view okay but this musical i am pitching because it seemed like something you would enjoy is called holy musical batman spelled b at symbol man okay and this is a spoof on like old classic 60s batman it's just well, a, Robin, I uh, yes, think we... <laughs> <laughs> it's a big campy musical all it's set in like that universe with like this and instead of the Joker, they've got this like candy man villain who's like all candy puns. It's so great. And this company, like they've had a YouTube channel for years. They were like a you know, a big supporter of YouTube in the early days. And awesome. the musicals are all uploaded by them on YouTube. So you can watch the entire thing for free there. This show is from 2012, so it is early enough that it had to be broken up into a lot of separate videos. This is before you could just have like a three-hour video on YouTube. So yeah. it's a lot of separate things. I'm sure someone has made a playlist of them all, and you can just yeah, there's watch a playlist them all. There on yeah. The channel. yeah, and what this is, is they've got excellent production values. This is filmed great. This is, you know, recorded great, the audio. It's the full stage production. So we are watching a recording of their live stage show, and this is a full length, like two and a half hour, like Broadway length, full musical, this original spoof story about Batman. Interesting. Yes. That sounds like a lot of fun. Uh, the m musicals I have seen, now that I think okay. about it, I've seen Sweeney Todd. Okay. Um, I've seen the musical c crossover episodes between Flash and Supergirl since <laughs> both Grant okay. Gustin and Melissa Benoist, I don't know how to say her last name, were both cast members on Glee. Mm -hmm. uh, so, they, so all the fans were like, wait, they can sing. They should do a musical episode, and <laughs> oh, they did. Uh, and I've listened to the musical episode of The Bright Sessions, which is an <laughs> audio drama podcast, and I believe that is all the musicals I have seen. Oh, Kyle. Um, I, I mean, I've seen Mary Poppins, mm. too, so that one yeah. that, so that counts, we've too. We've got Mary Poppins, which is a like a, a childhood family classic. We've got Little Shop of Horrors, which is more of like a cult classic thing. And then we've got this new, like independently produced, like comedy musical, which is like yes. a big trend out there. Like so many independent little companies are producing their own like big, wacky, crazy musicals with still the same amount of like strong storytelling and songwriting as any other, like more traditional professional thing you would find. Okay. So I wanted to give you kind of a variety this week. Sounds good. Sounds good. I think I'm going to go with Little Shop of Horrors. Okay. Because uh, I've, I've heard of that one, oh, and I, I know it's classic. Oh, no, uh, I, I, I I just haven't seen it. Yes, you did freeze, by the way. You were getting a little robot -y there. Can you still hear me, though? I'm going to take that as a no. Um, here's what we're going to do since it's already at the end of the show. I'm just going to go ahead and wrap things up. Um, so next week, what we are going to do is uh, we are going oh, to... Oh, am I back now? I, I can hear you. 
Now it's telling me my You're... camera works. Can you see me now? I cannot see you at the Why? moment. Why? Why? But I can hear, hear you. So while I have you here, Melissa, where can yeah. they find you on the interwebs? You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at WilkyWit. That's W-I-L-K-Y-W-I-T. There you go. You guys can find me on the internets, uh, on Twitter and Instagram at Yo Kyle Springer. If you guys want updates uh, for this podcast as well as our other ones, you can follow us on Twitter at The Whatnots. Uh, and if you guys enjoyed this show or any of our other podcasts, you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash the whatnots. And maybe if you give us a little bit more money, stuff like uh, Melissa dropping out of the Skype <laughs> call won't happen as often. Yeah. Um, we guys could absolutely use your help. So uh, take all of your life savings and transfer it to us. That would be amazing. Um, that being said, next week is a little shop of horrors. This has been episode 34 of the Whatnots Review Show. We will see you guys next week. Adios, guys. <laughs>